Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Well, Missouri Southern offers a wide variety of courses and recently started offering some certificate programs with special interest. Today we're going to focus on a program focusing on drones. And joining me, I'd like to introduce Brian Jones and Dr. John Messick. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate you having Thank us, you. Judy. Fairly new program at Missouri Southern. Uh, people might say they're teaching how to fly a drone. Explain how this came about. What happened here at Missouri Southern? Well, it's a little bit more than how to fly. It's really about the safety of the entire operation. Of course, it's certificate by the Federal Aviation Administration. So I'm a pilot by background, been mm -hmm. flying for over 55 years, and uh, Air Force first, uh, commercial airlines internationally second, uh, retired from United Airlines a few years back as a 787 Dreamliner instructor. Um, so uh, my desire was to help continue aviation safety, and so in the Joplin area, I put out some, uh, some feelers for people uh, in higher education that might be interested in uh, learning to fly and uh, certifying as FAA remote pilots for drones. Uh, Dr. Alan uh, uh, Marble answered the, uh, the email that I put out, asked uh, Dr. Carson, Paula Carsons, to meet with me, and we developed a series of courses for flying, operating, and certifying in uh, unmanned aircraft systems. Great. And you brought up an important point that it's FAA is tied into the, the requirements, the legal requirements or the safety requirements the government has worked together on. Right. Absolutely. There are about a million and a half drone operators from toys all the way up to military and commercial uh, drones and the uh, Federal Aviation Administration in the United States is uh, responsible for regulating the air safety of our national airspace system. Well, Dr. Messick, uh, people will recognize you having been a professor at Missouri Southern, retired, but they're wondering, how did you get involved with the drones program? <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a biologist. I did retire several years ago. I've continued to teach part-time, and uh, for many years I've been interested in, in drones and their potential applications, um, mainly from a data collection standpoint. I'm, I, I'm an ecologist, and uh, they've been used, at least on a preliminary basis, to collect scientific data. So when I heard about the drone courses here, I, uh, I enrolled right away. So you completed the courses that we're talking about, from certification. <laughs> yes, we had a continuing education course for faculty. Of course, as we're going to grow to teaching from 101 to 201 to 301, the introductory to the design and construction to the professional applications, we're going to need instructors. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dr. Messick volunteered and we offered a continuing education course which he joined our university relations and marketing course uh, or uh, department joined as well. Uh, Dr. Messick actually became the first certificate holder from the FAA under Missouri Southern course. Great. So you were talking about a certificate program so it's th three three hour courses for people in the community. So you'll have nine hours co credit for this program? That is true from a mm -hmm. uh, university perspective. There are accredited courses uh, our, uh, our certification uh, comes through, though, the Federal Aviation Administration, mm -hmm. similar to a, a law degree or a medical degree. Uh, there's a board, as a, it's an airman knowledge test uh, by the FAA, like a, a pilot certification process that you have to take a 60 question test and then pass as a remote pilot. Right. Well, I can see how this can apply to a lot of different majors across campus. And we have some pictures that I know you provided. So as we're talking, let people we're talk about drones. Let's see some things. So if we can look at some of the photos that we have, uh, kind of describe for the audience when we're talking about drones and what we're looking at. So this is yeah. one of your classroom experiences. Then. Yes, we have a basic uh, quadcopter. We fly as a laboratory experiment. You notice that we're indoors. That drone in particular, the Paradinafi, is our uh, university drone. It's from uh, France. Uh, this is one of the student drones that's a uh, quadcopter and we've asked the students to uh, uh, fly these in particular flight exercises. I have that drone with me over mm -hmm. here. That's a racer. Uh, it's one of the ones that you would control with first person view. This one is interesting because one of our students who's actually a communications major graduating flies this drone in our course. This is our uh, Civil Air Patrol operating in a uh, what we call the drone net. We get kids involved so that they can operate internally. And this is one of our local uh, flying clubs. Uh, they operate as a, uh, as a flying uh, club under the AMA. Uh, this, I think, is a course we taught just for recruiting, uh, introductory before we started the 101 course, and many got involved. Again, our Civil Air Patrol 
uh, and the uh, AMA, the Sky Kings Local Web City Club, uh, RC Club, that operate under uh, uh, Section 538 of the FAA as model aircraft operators. Uh, there's a great uh, interface between the FAA remote pilot certification mm -hmm. and the uh, model aircraft association, aeronautical model aircraft associations uh, around the uh, country uh, so that the FAA can be involved in the regulatory process of all of the systems that are flying, occupying our airspace. And I see the community ties as well. I imagine there are a lot of people just in the community interested in this type of program as well. That, that is correct. And, you know, in, in terms of our our students and the many disciplines drones might have mm -hmm. applications in. Uh, a lot of graduates these days have similar qualifications, but having this certification, this certificate uh, in drones may just give them a credential that not other graduates have. So, so it's a course important. that will enhance their major. They That's could take right. this as a certificate to enhance that major. Your background with biology, you mentioned that you mentioned about research. If somebody's going to be in the field, as we say, doing research, they can use that drone to follow those uh, animals, whatever they're looking at. You know. Yes, and, and vegetation analysis in mm -hmm. agriculture, uh, locating um, you know uh, outbreaks of disease and pests in uh, mm -hmm. in agriculture crops uh, can do that much more efficiently than in more traditional ways. We see a lot of drones as far as if you watch the news, like after a, for a hurricane, for instance, they fly over and show you the damage from the drones. Is that Absolutely. another application? Of that? Uh, we do those with civil applications through Civil Air Patrol, but your uh, geography department may be mm -hmm. interested in this because we do what we call orthomosaics, which is where we do uh, mapping by visual uh, camera shots of the drones and then overlay, overlay those with previous maps and then look at the differences between the maps and you can definitely see uh, how much damage might have been created where a bridge was washed out, where a structure may have been changed. Uh, there are a ton of applications for uh, uh, civil relief uh, programs, uh, even deliveries uh, mm. that we haven't mentioned. They're ongoing and right now uh, already starting in the United States uh, in various test areas where we can deliver medical supplies and even under COVID uh, test uh, uh, capabilities to uh, laboratories and, that and the like. So when the roads are out or you can't get to a community, you can use a drone to bring in help and supplies for We can fly. can fly. That way. You can always fly. So, so talking about the courses, then we have 101 is basically your introduction course. This is a drone and what it does? <laughs> We're just finishing up our first semester, SUAS 101. John uh, is going to teach that course this coming semester. Go ahead. Well, it's, it's a overview of mm -hmm. drones and their applications with some emphasis on the FAA uh, certification requirements. Right. So we talk about uh, airspace restrictions, we talk a little about aerodynamics, uh, and certainly crew management, and all those uh, things related to aviation. Now I noticed in the pictures you had earlier, there were so many different types of drones. You're yes. able to maybe discuss all these different types and how they're different or how similar? Or? We'll get into, in the 201 course, it's called design and construction, but it really is a purpose-oriented application. So uh, students can choose what purpose they would like to apply, and then they'll be able to design an unmanned aircraft system to be able to fulfill that purpose. For example, over here, when we get to look at some mm -hmm. of our toys, if you will, our show and tell, we have everything from quadcopters to fixed wing aircraft. And if uh, I've even got a swing aircraft that takes off vertically and then goes to a fixed wing straight and level configuration, for example, taking off for transportation delivery or an agricultural survey. So that's their understanding of if I want to do this, this is the best tool or the best drone to help accomplish this goal. That's right. And trying that together. And then uh, when you're talking about the actual hands-on flying, I know we have some video as well, which I think if they can call up the video, where your class is an active participation class. You're not just learning the theory, you're applying it. <laughs> Absolutely. We have one hour of lecture and two hours of laboratory each week. Mm -hmm. So each of the uh, students gets an opportunity to pilot through flight exercises and even mission exercises where we put purpose-oriented objectives into the flight exercise. Here they're flying a, a search and rescue exercise. As you see, uh, we're, we're fully equipped in our safety regalia. Uh, you can see that the uh, pilot operating has a view of what the drone is seeing, but that pilot, if you look at them, they're looking straight at the drone. So they're not they watching that video screen, straight they're on looking the drone. at the drone. Mm -hmm. And we have a second member of the crew, we teach crew resource management, who is monitoring for safety and for the visual picture on the screen. 
So the hands-on, is the, the coordination a big part of it as far as pushing the right button at the right time, I guess, in layman's terms? Well, Dr. Messick's actually going through the course in preparation <laughs> for teaching the course next semester. So, well, Yes, it takes skill to operate mm -hmm. a drone, and, and perhaps uh, younger individuals that have grown up with video games have an edge over <laughs> those of us that didn't, mm -hmm. uh, but it does require practice, and I've enjoyed seen some of my skills improve. I think I have a ways to go. Uh, <laughs> but you're inside here in this facility, obviously. So this is an indoor facility at Missouri Southern you're able yeah, to use? Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't have many videos. I think I forwarded a few, but uh, uh, we were very busy when we were outside. And we were specifically uh, on a mission to take some camera shots. And we're saying goodbye to graduating seniors. And so uh, Ryan's story of your own uh, department here mm -hmm. is uh, piloting the drone. Uh, we're in the uh, student uh, uh, environmental uh, shelter uh, right now because that's our backup. Today or that day we're showing the picture. It was raining and it was very high winds. So uh, we're indoors. Thank you for the facility, uh, Missouri Southern. So that's a nice big open facility for you to be able to have that program. Absolutely. Right? Normally we would fly outside on the mm -hmm. practice athletic field. We've called it the flying lion drone zone. And when the winds died down and the camera uh, or the uh, stopped raining, we did actually go outside of the facility to take these shots and we're we're waving goodbye to our graduating seniors, go Lions. Yeah. So that gives you an opportunity, I guess control-wise, when you're indoors, you really have to be precise and make sure you're not going to bump into the walls or the chairs and you know, teaching that control aspect. And, and we also have uh, the advantage of using a drone simulator mm -hmm. uh, to practice flying without actually using a drone. Oh, okay. um, it's a very sophisticated application and, and again, requires lots of practice to avoid crashes. Mm -hmm. Part of our homework assignments are 15 minutes a week of uh, flying and we can allow them to do that with their own drone. Students come with a drone of any variety they want to. Uh, they can fly with their own drones or they can fly on the simulator. Part of the course is we enroll them in a, a full-scale uh, simulation program uh, which allows them to have a controller which will then be applicable to the second course and then uh, fly in a simulated drone a flying environment. So their opportunity when they start the course, if they have that drone, they can start applying it, learning how it works. And Absolutely. Tying it together. So no matter where they are, no matter what the way. Tying that together. So, yeah. Well, you mentioned you had some drones with you. So if you want to uh, walk, if you walk over here, we'll take a kind of like show and tell, as you said, and let the audience see. Because people think of drones, and they maybe think of the, what we saw, the ones that had the four, you know, the propellers. But there's so much variety. So they're probably wondering, you know, what are the choices? Or what are the, well, I guess more importantly, what are the applications to the different choices of what you have? So we have a microphone on the table. and we'll for a moment but I'm going to pick up a microphone over here. And so this is the fun part. Um, this is the part that brings students hopefully to our class because we're not just teaching all the rules that you have to have to pass your FAA test and get remote pilot certifying. We're teaching you how to fly, design, construct zone, uh, drones, unmanned aircraft systems, which of course consist of the actual aircraft, the remote controller itself, and then all the information transfer systems and the human interface amongst not only the remote pilot, but the people that are involved in the operation all together. So uh, let's start with the controller right here. It's a standard like a uh, Game Boy type controller. Mm -hmm. uh, you have two uh, joysticks here which operate the drone both laterally and vertically and allow it to yaw so it's turning in directions. So on these drones, we are having uh, quadcopters as the primary uh, first application, which is just a rotary wing aircraft. This one is one that uh, Ryan Story uh, decided to use for hers. She's got two for one, so she can actually maneuver these drones. At the same time? with someone else uh -huh. uh, against but, but each other and they put out a uh, remote signal, an infrared mm -hmm. signal, and try to can shoot each other down. And so if the remote signal hits the drone in front of it, it kind of circles around and the third time it hits, that drone actually goes to the ground, not violently, so but has drone to, dog uh, puts almost. its motor <laughs> and they have drone uh, uh, air defense maneuvering and uh, dog fights. Uh, this one was the racing drone that you saw in the uh, the video earlier. This one is operated by what we call first person view. You can put goggles on and the goggles have a projector in the front of it and the projector will show the camera 
the picture of the camera that the drone is seeing. So you're actually taking on a view as if you're in the drone you're itself. You're the drone as it's flying. They do this mm -hmm. in racing, drone racing, where they mm -hmm. compete against each other with obstacles. Unfortunately, this has very few applications towards certification as it stands right now because in Part 107, which is the FAA certification program, is safety of flight, you have to keep direct visual contact with your drone as a remote pilot. Now, the uh, the other operators, the other members of what we call our crew resource management process can then take on the goggles and look through the camera just as we saw the shot uh, mm -hmm. from the uh, camera on a drone like that, uh, which would of course come up as a mounted position on the controller so that you would have the ability to have a control system with you if you got cleared for a first person view operation right. and you would be controlling it with the controller and seeing the first person view in the goggles. This drone takes a transition from a vertical takeoff to a straight and level flight and in that would allow it to do large-scale mapping and surveying types of operations, for example, agricultural crops right. or uh, uh, ranching. You could count your cattle, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Now, this one does the full-scale uh, straight and level flight. Just like a So this is a fixed-wing mm -hmm. configuration. Uh, we will go into course two to allow uh, our students to design and construct fixed-wing configurations. This one is very close to my heart because I started my Federal Aviation Administration uh, as a sailplane pilot, as a glider pilot. Mm. And this one, although it has a motor on the front to help it fly, it mostly glides. And so it would operate in the thermals and the rising air currents just like a bird. But it has the ability to remotely control it through the ailerons, elevators, and the, rudder. So just you're like piloting a it from the ground, right? <laughs> through a control system uh, like this. Now, this is a standard drone configured control system, like your uh, game systems that you would use with two joysticks and a number of buttons that serve special purposes. This is an example of some of the things that our students may be interested in research and design. This is by a former uh, astronaut and uh, uh, now current uh, physician, uh, Scott Parazinski, a company called Fluidity Technology down in Houston, Texas. But our university has purchased this because it is a single-handed piloting system. It's a, a joystick of operation. Mm -hmm. So the pilot can with one hand, and if I'd had this mounted, I could hold the mic and fly my drone at the same time because now I have, just like I flew fighter aircraft for the Air mm -hmm. Force, go forward, uh, pull same up, type go of down, understanding. go left, go right, and then I have my throttle or my thrust uh, vector right here in my thumb. So everything in one hand. So, yes. So that understanding of all the variety, and of course you have nice the cases for protection of carrying them. And was we, have, we have cases uh, for uh, keeping the drones safe. Uh, one of my favorites is our own university, uh, Missouri Southern's uh, drone, the Parrot and Naffy that we just showed. And I can't hold the mic and do this at the same time, so I'm going to lay it down on the table. This is a backpack configuration. I could put it on backwards, uh, unzip it, and then in a remote operation out in the field, take this drone out, assemble it, and operate it very rapidly. This drone is very... Uh, uh, compact. Uh, the quadcopter motors are attached to legs that come out. I hope this click isn't making a terrible noise in the microphone, but this uh, operates with propellers that are flexible enough yet strong enough to provide the propul propulsive force necessary. And as you can see on the front, its primary payload, that is what the drone is carrying to operate or to accommodate its mission, is a camera. That camera is the key to being able to see what you're High doing. resolution, highly capable camera. And of course I have a control device similar to that one to operate it with that I can mount my phone system. I'll pull out my telephone system, just mm -hmm. my little uh, you just use your uh, cell phone, phone mm -hmm. my cell phone, and then I would add it right here onto the remote controller and I'm ready to go out in the field. The remote controller turns on as soon as you turn this on. I have a wire just to uh, reduce the amount of signals that are going out into the atmosphere to connect directly to That's my fine. video picture, but that uh, 
uh, signal from this control system, and I'm not going to turn this on for safety purposes indoors, but it goes directly into the drone to control the drone, and then a downlink telemetry from the drone comes back into the camera system and then records the signal and allows you then to operate the mission. Wow. This is the university's drone, which all of our students are learning to operate mm -hmm. in the mission applications and learning how it operates in the design and construction phase. Great. And if people have seen the Missouri Southern website, they've seen some drone shots of the you know campus and those been taken with these type of drones. I hope so and I'm and I'm just offering that uh, we are not limited by the types of uh, of uh, careers or the types of applications that we offer in the catalog. We're only limited by the imagination of the students that decide to come fly with us because flying is fun. Mm -hmm. No matter how you do it, it's fun, whether it's recreational or professional. And we have a, a, a direct connection with a, uh, we're a hybrid course, uh, a distance learning capability through the Unmanned Safety Institute. And that Unmanned Safety Institute uh, links you into professional certifications beyond your FAA certification so that you can get directly involved in the workforce into uh, careers uh, by their placement programs and their certification and uh, credentialing programs. Great. Well, great. Well, I thank you for the demonstration. I'm going to ask a question for Dr. Messick while you're making your way back to the set. But Certainly. you mentioned earlier that students can graduate, maybe have that step up above other people. We mentioned biology, but yes. I can see other majors, whether you know, it's criminal justice or something, where that being able to have that type of technology really giving them that additional uh, credential. Well, I think so. You know, uh, just a word about the technology. Uh, my first drone was a first-generation drone. Really, uh, controlling it was difficult. It was very mm -hmm. stable at all. Uh, for this class, I purchased a current drone, very stable. And that is due primarily to the software and the, the control features of the drone. So, for example, in computer science, I think mm -hmm. there are outstanding opportunities to develop programs and control of drones. We now have such things as geofencing, so drones can avoid collision with objects, uh, will return to where they started from. So the technology has come a long way, and I think we're only seeing the beginning. So it's still continuing to develop. You're going to see and more. so uh, for all disciplines, I think there are going to be more and more applications. Mm -hmm. And we probably don't even realize what those could be at this point in time. I, you mentioned it's up to the, what the student's imagination, so that leaves a lot of possibilities. Absolutely, and I would mention that uh, both of our last two uh, presidential administrations through our pilot initiative programs and the Department of Transportation, which the FAA is under, have called this the next generation of aviation, the operation mm -hmm. of unmanned systems. We have over uh, a million and a half pilots uh, now operating drones. Uh, and that's increasing, this is from last June when we certified the course, that's increasing by 6,000 a month. And uh, in the United States, about a half a million are uh, commercially registered. That number is increasing by over 3,000 a month now. So uh, it's a huge um, density of traffic in our, uh, in our atmosphere, in our national airspace system. Very worthwhile to learn how to do it well. As I say, the understanding that there's so much flying around above us that you have to know the safety features and how high to go, where to go, what not to do. <laughs> well, I've been impressed with, with Brian and how he emphasizes safety mm -hmm. and respect for privacy, being professional, right. all those good, healthy attitudes. I, uh, I started out in the glider program at the Air Force Academy many years ago. Uh, I was at the Air Force Academy with a young man named... Uh, Chesley Burnett Sullenberger III, and of course uh, you may remember him uh, from Miracle on the Hudson mm. as a classmate and a squadron mate of mine. But uh, we in the aviation business are all about trying to ensure that we determine what the risks are in aviation and operate professionally enough so as to be able to reduce those risks, both the probability that they might occur or what will happen when they do occur so that the result is not catastrophic. We've been talking about the courses. If somebody's interested, how do they enroll? Is it offered through Missouri Southern, go through the website, enroll? What, you mentioned through which department, where are they? Yes, at? if they are not a student, they of course need to apply for admission mm -hmm. and um, seek out uh, someone to help them enroll uh, in the biology or environmental health area or the advising, counseling, and testing area 
will help them get enrolled. Great. And of course, the courses have the prefix S U A S. Okay. Small unmanned aircraft systems. So they can look for that in the list of potential courses. And we'll be offering in the spring both 101. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Mesk will be teaching, and I'll be teaching design and construction S U A S 201, and all at uh, Reynolds Hall in the, in the uh, uh, 237 laboratory. So with a three-segment course, you could get in three semesters, you could go through the whole sequence if you started in spring or fall, just with three semesters. You could That's by design and uh, the way that we are operating so as to be able to get our FA certification within one year. Each mm -hmm. course is now laid out as a prerequisite for the other so that you could uh, uh, start in one semester and finish in the third semester. We'll be finishing up our first cycle, summer of 2021. Great. Looking well, you talked about some of the students. You've mentioned some of the students. What's the most common feedback you hear from a student? Maybe when they're taking the course for the first time, with a reaction. Well, it's a great adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I think there are challenges in in this. The mm -hmm. FAA regulations about airspace and uh, and uh, other regulations are complex, uh, but it's certainly doable and very interesting. And I think the students I've seen. Um, have genuine interest in this and that makes all the difference. Our, our uh, students that are normally enrolling are not pilots. They're not certified under Part 61. Mm -hmm. They don't already know how to fly other aircraft. They don't know how to operate in the airspace environment that we find ourselves in. So the FAA requires that they learn what those other pilots are doing. And so that's where I come in, as to be able to offer the background, the benefit of the experience, so as to be able to make the translations between the detail, the technicalities of all these, these myriads of regulation into what's important to a remote pilot operator. And remember, the remote pilot is still a pilot. It's as if you're flying in the aircraft, but you're remotely projecting yourself to almost anywhere in the world, uh, literally in a military application, we fly drones from the United States that operate internationally. Go overseas, right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I talk about uh, being able to go like Pinocchio did into the belly of a whale if you wanted to uh, in the introductory course. So the sky is no limit. It's up to the student to what they want to do. A lot of possibilities. Uh, well, I'd like to thank both of you for sharing some information today for our audience and uh, sharing the drones. And if they have questions, where they can go and find out about the course for next Thank Quite you for welcome. Here. Thank, thank you. you very much. You're thank welcome. You. And I'd like to thank the viewers for joining us this week on Newsmakers. I'm Judy Stiles. Hope you can join me again next week at the same time on the station. We'll see you then.